What's up guys? I want to come up to you with a couple tips on four movements that are going to be coming up this week. I won't be here to do an actual video. Huh? So I want to get something to you this week of four movement. I think we could see this week. Give you some strategy tips on the four movements. I think that possibly could show up this week. Maybe not all together. Maybe all together are chest bar pull-ups, muscle ups of some kind, handstand push-ups, wall ball shots, or dumbbell snatch. They could all be in together in some type of weird chipper, or we might see one or two at a time. Either way, those are the movements that I think are left, and I wanna give you some tips on how I think you can tackle them the best. Chest and more pull-ups are usually in the open paired with something that's short and sweet. I think this week we could see something along those lines, something very high intensity. The thing about chest bar pull-ups is that a lot of people struggle stringing them together. The key is make sure you set up in a way that you can do what you can do. Similar to the total bar tip I gave last week, you want to find a pull-up bar that's short for you or use the box method, something that you can maintain reps going without having to come down and shake it out a lot. Definitely don't want to jump if you have a some type of high intensity movement that goes with it like box jumps or wall ball shots. We don't want to be jumping a whole lot to do these singles on the pull up. So we'll do this box method. Again, I'm the creator of the box method. I'll show you. There's a video here I'll post as well for 14.2 that I did and I had the box method. The second method or the second movement is going to be muscle ups. I think that we could see that this week. Just they might try to use it as a separator of some people. Uh, it could be bar, could be ring. If we're doing bar muscle ups, we're looking at the jump into the first rep. I'll show you in a video. We're looking to set up a little bit away from the pull up bar, jump into it, get a nice hollow position, kind of whip your feet up to help you pull yourself over. Most of us just need to be doing muscle ups one at a time, just trying to get through them methodically each time. Ring muscle ups. If there's ring muscle ups, here's the key to having good ring muscle ups. Short straps. A lot of times in gyms you see people string them all the way to the top and they have these big long chains, big long straps. We want to find short straps. The shorter the strap, the smaller the swing. And most of us, all we have to do is get the false grip, shorten the swing down, and get over the top of those rings. Hopefully we can press up that ring down. Third movement I think we can see this week or next week is handstand push-ups. Last year we saw strict handstand push-ups for the first time and that threw a wrench into almost everyone's plan. Hopefully since then we've been working strict movements, thinking that that could happen again. If it is strict handstand push-ups, we want to make sure that we find a nice solid mat to use. A lot of times you'll see people using the 25 pound plates with the ab mat between. Well the issue with that is that if your head goes too far below your hands and you're already struggling with strict movements, you're going to make it even harder on yourself. So find yourself a mat that's nice and firm that you can put your hands on and your head hits at the same time. That'll give you a little rebound off the mat. Now, I say that to be very careful with that because you are bouncing off your head, but what we don't want to do is have our head going lower than our hands and try to press out through strict. If it's kipping, we can have that little extra cushion because you're going to spend a little more time on your head. Unlike the strict handstand push-up where you're hitting your head and going right back up, the kipping handstand push-up, you're actually going to have to relax on your head. When we're doing the kipping handstand push-up, the biggest tip that I can give somebody is get your butt against the wall and keep your toes pulled through your shins. Keep the bottoms of your feet pointing straight up in the air and then kick off the wall and only hit where you think you're going to finish. You don't want to kick halfway up the wall and have your feet trying to drag up the wall or your back arching or whatever. You don't want any drag when trying to finish that handstand push-up. The fourth movement I think we could see this week or next week is going to be wall ball shots. They weren't in there in 2019, uh, but they I believe they were in 2018 and 2017. The thing is about the wall ball shots is they usually come in big sets, right? So we're usually looking at 50 or 150, so they're huge. Where people go astray there is they try to do the sets unbroken and that is almost always unnecessary unless you're a games athlete. I think the key to wall balls is hitting a number and having quick transitions picking it back up. You'll see when you throw, we don't want to leave our hands up in the air. We want to throw and kind of bring our hands back down to our sides. If the ball hits the ground, we let it fall. We take a breath while we're standing nice and tall, pick it up right to our squat and go. If there's big sets of wall ball shots, figure out what you can do quickly. Throw 10, drop it, throw 10, drop it, throw 10, drop it. I think one year they had uh, wall balls in sets of 50. I think I did like 13 and 12 multiple times until I got to 50. And I just kept breaking it up that way. And I ended up having a pretty good score. In the Final movement I think we could see this week is the dumbbell snatch. And I think he may pair that up with something quick. So you could see like a dumbbell snatch, chest of bar workout, something that's gonna get your heart rate up real quick that he could kind of ascend in reps or something along those lines. If you're doing dumbbell snatch, the key is making that transition quick from rep to rep. Now, 
if it's the same rules in the past, you have to bring it down to a certain level, but the key is switching in the air. Make sure both ends of the dumbbell touch the ground, but touch the ground a little bit further back between your feet than you think you should. Reason for this is that your arm's gonna rest against your thigh, and as you go to extend your hips up, you'll be able to kind of throw that dumbbell up and use a little less arms to get there and a little more hip action. Think of it kind of like a kettlebell swing when your arms hit your legs and you extend the hips through. You wanna kind of do the same thing with your arm when we're on the dumbbell snatch. That will help you if it is paired up with something that's very arm heavy like pull-ups or even wall wall shots. I know these aren't specific strategies to the workout that could come out this week, but it will give you some things that you can kind of practice this week and kind of get set up. Rather than just be blindsided and trying these new strategies on Friday or Thursday, whenever it is that you're doing the workout, you can start practicing now and kind of be ready for when that workout does show up, you're ready to go. Good luck.